Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. Today, we're going to do take two, a redo of our comparison of the Ender 5 and the Prusa i3 MK3. A comparison of a $330 printer and a $750 printer and help you decide when you should select one versus the other. We've printed a series of models from the Kickstarter evaluation models and um, do you think you can tell which is which? Which of these are printed on the $330 printer? Which are printed on the $750 printer? Well, stay tuned and let's learn something together. We're going to begin today by talking about all of the components that impact print quality. Print quality is not just impacted by your printer. Let's take a look at this picture together. At the bottom of your print platform, the bedrock component is the printer itself. That's the hardware, the physical hardware, the electronics, the power supply. Those are all components that impact quality. Now the hardware does not work alone the hardware requires a layer of software called firmware. That's software that's loaded into the hardware, and it's that software that interprets the G code produced by a slicer and uses though that interpretation to direct the physical components, the stepper motors, the belts, the printhead, the heat bed, the physical component of your printer. In order to take a 3D model and print it on a 3D printer, you need to take the model, which is generally an STL file, and convert it into G-code. G-code is code that goes layer by layer and instructs the printer on how to lay down filament. A slicer is used to do that. And finally, the characteristics of the filament itself will impact quality. In order to do a proper test, I have eliminated as much variability as possible. For the first two tests, I use Cura with standardized profiles. For the third test, I did use Slicer Prusa Edition in order to see the impact of the overall ecosystem. Because one of the things that's unique about Prusa is they supply the physical hardware, they supply their variation of the firmware, and they also supply their own modified slicer. So you get an integrated solution. Now let's look for a minute at the Kickstarter model which comes with a document that is available that tells you how to interpret it. The first thing we're going to look at is dimensional accuracy. We're going to measure these concentric rings and see how accurate they are. The second thing we'll look at is negative feature resolution. We'll see whether we can remove all the different pins that are printed with tighter and tighter tolerances. The third thing we're going to look at is flow control. Fine flow control will determine whether we can print all the way to the top of these towers and whether there's stringing on the towers. Next, by looking at this ramp, we'll look at overhang. We'll then look at the sides of the model to determine if there's ringing. And finally, we'll look for z-axis anomalies by looking at this tower. Okay, now let's look at the actual models. The first model we're going to look at is the model produced from the Ender 5. With the exception of a real problem on the top, um, this model is very nice. It's a very nice print that would be acceptable for the vast majority of uses. Now, this was printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III. Uh, at first, this print looks spectacular. Um, there's very little stringing on the top. Um, it's very, very clean with one major 
problem. And that is there's a bit of ringing on both these sides. Or some people call it ghosting. And you might be able to see that in the print. In addition, these two pins would not come out. Um, and so the precision of the print was not quite as good as the ender where all the pins but one came out. Now there's a third alternative I looked at. I wanted to be able to judge the overall Prusa ecosystem. So I printed one using Slicer Prusa Edition. And the primary difference is that there's a lot of stringing on the top. The towers are all complete. On the ender, the towers were not complete. Both Prusa models, the towers are all complete. On this one, there's more stringing. I believe that's because the default profile for generic PLA has a much higher temperature. And I think the temperature was just a little bit too high for Hatchbox. Um, all of the pins came out. Everything else on this model is absolutely perfect. So um, there's no ghosting at all. So I believe if I drop the temperature a little bit, um, the slicer edition of Prusa of the three choices would produce the best model. Now, let's look at the numbers together. If you look up at the screen now, you'll see that first of all, the Ender 5 is a $330 printer. The Prusa is a $750 printer. In terms of dimensional accuracy, they were both ra ranked a five based on this test criteria. That's the highest score you can get. They both did a very, very good job. And um, I checked these all with calipers. Um, well done. In terms of flow control, the Prusa overall is better. In the case of the Cura version, there was a little less stringing. So I ra ranked that a four versus a three for the version that had more stringing uh, that was printed in Slicer. But as I indicated, I think that's because of temperature. In terms of fine negative features, that's the ability to get the pins out. The um, Slicer edition was perfect. The Ender and the Cura version of the Prusa were in the middle. In terms of overhang, that's if you look at this ramp feature and you look underneath, the Prusa did a much, much better job. Almost perfect. The last section was a little less perfect on the two Prusa models. Um, that would indicate that the cooling is overall better on the Prusa. Bridging, they were both absolutely perfect. In terms of ghosting or XY resonance, um, on the Ender, um, it was perfect on the Ender model. It was not as good on the Prusa model printed via Cura, but it was perfect again on the Prusa model printed via Slicer 3R, or Slice 3R, Slicer Prusa Edition. And um, in terms of Z access, um, anomalies, uh, these are both perfect. The layers on all three of these models are really gorgeous. So you can see the scores are relatively close. The Ender 5 and the Prusa when using Cura are basically a tie. The Prusa using their own slicer does produce a little better quality print. Okay, let's look at my conclusion. Generally, I think we have to now start dividing 3D printers into consumer, prosumer, and professional. All of the printers that I look at are in the consumer or prosumer grade. I would classify the Ender line, even the Ender 5, which is a really a remarkably good printer for the price, $330, because it has that full square frame. You get no ghosting at all. It's rock solid. I would consider that a consumer printer. I think it's the best printer per dollar spent that you can get in the consumer space. I think it just does a very, very good job for the price. It's reliable, it's easy to use. If it had auto bed leveling, it would be just that much nicer. On the other hand, the Prusa is really a prosumer device. It has a direct extruder, the direct extruder is why 
the towers all completed in either model and why it's able to print with much better precision when using the Prusa slicer. Um, it's also why I can print a wider range of filaments more easily because it doesn't have a Bowden tube. And finally, in general, I find the Prusa significantly faster when you crank up via the front panel the speed I often run at 200% and see little, if any, difference in quality. So you have a $330 printer, you have a $750 printer. The $330 printer I would consider consumer. I highly recommend it to people printing a few times a month, three, four, five, maybe six or seven. However, if you're gonna be printing every day, or if this is part of a business, I think it's worth the Prusa, not only because the print quality is slightly better, but because it's faster and because of the ecosystem. The Prusa ecosystem is unmatched. They update their firmware on a regular basis, they update their slicer on a regular basis, and they even update their hardware. So I just ordered a update kit for my Mark III, my MK3, to make it an MK3S. They changed the filament sensor and some of the extruder uh, geometries. It cost me $19 plus shipping. And I'm going to print the 3D parts to do the upgrade. So Prusa has a very rich ecosystem, but as a hobbyist, printing a few times a month, I probably don't need it. So for the casual 3D printer user, I think the Ender 5 is a remarkable printer. For someone who's a little more in the prosumer side and where the economics are a little less important, the Prusa i3 MK3, now the MK3S, is really a fantastic machine. The best machine until you get into machines uh, costing thousands of dollars. Well, thank you. I hope I clarified things here. Um, I tried to use a more consistent methodology and therefore the results should be more repeatable. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, if this was meaningful, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's continue to learn things together.